What up, Buffet 2? Hi, I'm John Baloy. Hi, this is Amonix. Hi, guys, this is Toby. We are listening to B Roll. B Roll. B Roll. With Cyril Zuma. Welcome to B Roll. My name is Cyril Zuma. I am a commercial photographer and founder at Color Space. Today, I am chatting to an amazing woman, an amazing lady. She is a writer. She is an editor and a digital content creator. Um, for those who know and have listened to some episodes on B-Roll, you'll know that I bring really amazing guests and today is definitely no exception. Now, lady, how are you doing? Um, fantastic. After that intro, always weird hearing about yourself. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, I think. Uh, I think, yeah. You I think? think? I think I'm okay. Happy Youth Day, actually. Happy Youth Day. Did, well, you know, did you know it was Youth Day? Did you forget? I knew it was Youth Day, but I think I saw a tweet. <laughs> and saw, it says, if you've ever partied at Liquid Chefs, you're not part of the youth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm part of the youth anymore. <laughs> I, I think we'll just celebrate youth month, but we won't really celebrate youth day. I think that's the better way. All right, all right. <laughs> For those who don't know who you are, please can you introduce yourself? Funny enough, my YouTube intro is my name is Nelly DCBC, and if you know, you know. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I am a writer. I am an editor, and I'm a digital content creator. How did we meet? Because I'm, you know, earlier on we were chatting about how we met, and mm. I think maybe you you have a better memory than I do. So we met two years ago on set. Okay. I was doing a PR shoot for Handled, which is my management agency. Okay. And there was this guy, I think his name was Cyril Zuma. He was <laughs> photographer on set. That's where we met. Okay. Um, still some of my favorite photos. Actually, like recently had one of them as my Twitter Abbey two years later. Oh, wow. Mm. And it is two years later. Okay. Yeah. So who is Handled? So Handled manage um, digital content creators, young creators, um, such as myself. Okay. Um, and a lot of other influences you may be maybe familiar with. Aluve's there. Aluve Gunza. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, yeah, there's some travel bloggers, makeup, fashion, BC. So, yeah. And what, what do they manage you for? Um, they manage me for my... Um, my my digital content creation. So mm-hmm. over the years, I have worked with um, a com- a couple of companies and uh, done mainly in like the beauty and lifestyle space. So I've done some campaigns with Nivea, with Revlon. I've done a Switch Beauty campaign. So makeup reviews, tutorials, the likes. I feel like you're too chilled for who you are. You know that. <laughs> this is my this is my general this is my general energy. Everyone who hangs out with me is like you're actually really really shy and calm and reserved. Is this, is this how you've always been? I've always 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 been the zen. Actually, in high school, um, I was known in the group for being the quiet friend. Like my confidence started to come out really really late. I'd say from like grade ten, grade eleven. Okay. But I've always always been really really shy. I think I have. I come from a family with like very loud personalities and I've always been the one that's just really, really zen. When I have like some champagne in my system. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) There's there's an alter ego that comes out. Her name is Jasmine. Her name is Jasmine. Okay. Her name is Jasmine. Before we get to Jasmine, I would actually like to know where did you grow up and where were you born and where did you grow up? So I was born and raised in Zambia. My mom is Zambian. Okay. Um, and I moved to Johannesburg when I was eight. So my mom is Zambian, like I said, and my dad is South African. So I was born and raised there and then predominantly grew up in Joburg. Um, went to primary school here, went to high school here. And then I went to go study in Cape Town. Okay. And then I came back to Joburg. How, how, how was your childhood as a, as a whole in general? Mm-hmm. My childhood was lovely. Like, um, you know, my dad calls me a static baby. Okay. Um, I, you know, between travels from Zambia to finally coming to live here, I also have 
my closest family and Zim, mm-hmm. so all my cousins. Okay. So I would travel like a lot between Zambia, Zim, South Africa growing up. That was really, really fun. I think um, it definitely it put me in touch with different cultures. And then finally coming to South Africa, I got in touch with a whole bunch of other cultures. So it's been it's been a fun childhood. I do I do move up and down quite a lot. Okay. You know, one of my friends says I'm the most nomadic person he knows. I could never stay in one place for too long. So even when I am here, I'll probably do like a year or two in Joburg, go to Cape Town, come back, maybe go to Zambia. I'm always moving. I'm about to ask, where are you going to go to next? <laughs> <laughs> Should we be following you on your know, YouTube? I actually really, really want to do a UK stint. That mm-hmm. was another fun thing about my childhood. It's actually... One of the reasons I started writing. So when I was in primary school there, we used to have three school terms as opposed to four. I know when I moved here, we had four terms. So with three terms, I had longer holidays. Okay. And for uh, a couple of those holidays, I went to go visit my aunts in the UK. And even though it would be like short periods of time, like yeah. I would force and come back with an accent. But I got really, <laughs> I got really, really intrigued by by the English language. And then eventually when I did go to study um, after high school, I went to Cape Town and I studied at GCT and English was one of my majors. So oh, wow. that's kind of how I got into the writing as well. Now, for me, this is very interesting because I would like to know what does it mean to be a youth in South Africa right now? Look, you, you just mentioned now you're a SEDEC baby. So, you, you know, you are quite versed in, in a lot of countries. What does it mean to be youth in South Africa? I think... I'm going to be honest and say we definitely still have a very long way to go. Um, You know, even during my studies, um, I had to take a two year break just for financial reasons and not being able to pay my fees and stuff. Yeah. Came back to Joburg and I worked for two years. But even from that process, like it was so hard to get funding or to try to get help. And that was also around the time that fees must fall was happening. Or, you know, that was during that period. So it's really, really disheartening to see that we're still in that position now, you know, especially in such a digital era. You know, we see a lot of tweets and um, social media posts across Facebook, Instagram, people trying to raise funding just to study. You know, we struggle to to complete our studies and even once we do we struggle to get jobs again even during that period I went through a year of being unemployed after being retrenched and no matter how many jobs I had done no matter how many qualifications I had like I just could not land a job so it's extremely extremely challenging um we definitely have a long way to go and I think definitely a lot more emphasis needs to be put on empowering the youth and securing our education and securing us jobs in the market. What does that mean? I mean, I know, I know this is very easy. You know, it sounds like a very serious topic yeah. and you just answered it very well. I think you Thank could you. be on the Miss World. You? <laughs> 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 you. You know, what, what can the government do in truth? I mean, you know, what can they do to, to actually alleviate this, this unemployment that we're talking about right now? You qualify, yes, you, you know, you can go to varsity, you qualify, but afterwards there is no job. And if there mm-hmm. is a job for you, it's probably... A very minimum paying job that you, you what you'll be doing is mm. hand to mouth. Mm. So what can government do? You know, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but there is that quote something about in order to go forward, sometimes you have to go backwards first. Okay. And I think you know systematically, there's so much that needs to be um, addressed and dismantled from a government level, just in order for certain systems to run smoothly. Sure. You know, the fact that. You know, just last night we had an address, <laughs> family meeting, yes, actually. <laughs> family meeting, and it's extremely infuriating that, you know, our government just lacks accountability, especially in terms of the mis- mismanagement of funds. Yeah. You know, there's so much corruption at a government level that it even makes me skeptical to figure out you know, what is the way forward sure, sure. in terms of the youth. Like if we haven't even solved that problem. I don't know when we begin to solve the problem that we have right now, which is scary. Yeah, then for me, then that raises another topic. Mm -hmm. Could um, the youth, what can the youth do? I mean, I know it sounds like, you know, is education our Mm -hmm. only way? 
Um, and I'm just thinking as a creator myself, I, you know, I, I remember leaving my job and I was like, what am I going to do? And I found photography and I found the creative industry. It's worked well for me. Um, it, you know, I think be outside of the education, but what else can create or just uh, you do? It's such, a, it's such a tricky one because we're also such an entrepreneurial country yes. but we also need to be honest about the fact that not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur you sure. know there are some people who want to be in corporate there are some people who do well in corporate there yeah. are some people who enjoy it but they they can't get the jobs yeah you can't push those people to be entrepreneurs if it's you know if it's not what they want to do sure or it's not a lucrative move for them so it's 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 tricky to answer because again, as a creative, you kind of dabble in in all these different avenues, right? Like yeah. myself, I've I've worked in corporate. I've tried my hand at having my own business. I've tried my hand at freelancing. So, you know, I I'm at a stage where I think these are the three different avenues we should look at. But again, it takes me back to where does that funding come from? Sure. Where does it come from? And that's what I actually don't know. I wish I had the answers. Yeah. <laughs> I really wish I did. Shucks. Earlier on, we were talking about mental health. Mm. Um, and again, I think this is also just, you know, passes on a little bit to um, the unemployment side of things. Mm. You know, you were talking about you meditate before you even get on social mm. media. Mm. Um, you know, can you give me some tips? I think you know you, you've got a very calm nature Thank about you. yourself, and, uh, and and as a creative, we yeah. are in an industry that's very fast paced. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when it comes to mental health, it's something that's very very close to my heart, and I've always um, been very vocal about it, at least on my social media as well, because yeah. of my own personal experience. So. Um, I it kind of weirdly was part of the reason I got back into creating like at a pace that I did. Yeah. But in 2013, I was diagnosed bipolar 2 while I was still in Cape Town. And I subsequently took a break off of school just to come back to Joburg, be with my family, take some months off, recover, etc. Yeah. Um, but during that time, I was making a lot of art. I was doing a lot of visual art. I was writing a lot as well. And it became a therapeutic thing for me. Yeah. Um, but I also at that time got off all my medication. So routine um, and practices like meditation over the years, especially this year, yeah. um, have become really, really helpful to me. Okay. Um, because especially, you know, as young creatives, you're exposed to a lot of different environments yeah. and you can end up self-medicating with the wrong things, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, insane amounts of alcohol, etc. Yeah. And so I was trying to, you know, just have a little bit more control of my consumption because I know how much it can trigger my mania, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I got into practices like meditation, which quite literally, like you can find videos on YouTube and they'll help you with your breathing um, and just centering yourself and grounding yourself. So I think before I consume like any technology, yeah. engage with people in the morning, it's always important to me to just make sure that you know, my energy is right, my mind is calm, helps me with my anxiety. So yeah, like I, I wake up quite early, write about how you're feeling, write about your intention for the day. And it's been it's been really helpful for me. So the journaling, writing, uh, meditating has definitely been helping you. Mm, okay. As you can hear, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you are, you, are, you are very, very calm right now. I think for those who will be watching on the YouTube will definitely see that <laughs> she is calm, she is relaxed. Um, she's not going anywhere. So let's talk about creators. I mean, you are a creator yourself. You just mentioned, you know, you you, you used sort of the creative part um, to sort of not escape, but to, to get away from mm -hmm. some of the world's problems. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the creative things that you've worked on that you're proud of? Um... I think, you know, it's so funny. I always go back to some of my earliest work that I would at the time consider insignificant, but I initially actually wanted to be a graphic designer or visual artist. Okay. Um, so I did like design and art in high school. And so by way of the subjects, I had to do like drawings and paintings and stuff. 
and that work made it into like the school's exhibition which I was like oh that's so validating I am actually good at this yeah. um, but then I started picking up hobbies where I would just teach myself how to use like certain programs um, on my laptop and things like that and I don't know my, my path just <laughs> it kept going in many different directions from there so I would say some of my early work in terms of my my visual arts, I think, has followed me like through to this point. Okay. Um, my job as editor at the Throne magazine, I think, definitely was a career highlight for me. Are you still? Again, are you still there, or you're no longer there? I'm no longer there. Okay. I'm now with uh, Tagged Online, okay. um, which is a digital platform uh, funded by Multi Choice. Okay. Yeah. So I think, yeah, getting back into like the digital space now, like with both those jobs, I get to combine both my passions. Like I get to deal with the visual aspect, but I also get to have the written aspect. So yeah, I'd say like those, like my early work and yeah. then the jobs that came from that. Okay, so you sure. so you sort of get to watch some of the some of the things happening mm. in the, in the, in the industry. Who are some of your favorite creators? I know we chatted about this <laughs> earlier, and you know you may say, you may you may not mention some of them, but um, you know, who are your favorite creators? You know, I even joked earlier, and I said this feels like when you win your Grammy, <laughs> and you have to thank everyone, and you forget to mention names personally. <laughs> I've been practicing my acceptance speeches for a long time. Yeah. I think that's manifesting. But um, there's so many, there's so many incredible creatives that I want look up to, but I think also that I have had access to like over the years. So you know, the list is really, really endless, but I think if I can narrow it down to a few, I would say definitely... Um, Austin Malema, I he's, think. He's been doing good work. Yeah, his career trajectory has been insane. And he's, like I was telling you earlier, he's someone that I've known since high school. So that's like maybe 12, 13 years at this point. Wow. So seeing like where he started to okay. where he's at now is incredible, yeah. I think. Austin, definitely. Um, if we're talking photography side as well, I'm obsessed with David Black's work right now. Mm, that's another guy who's doing really I'm amazing. obsessed with David Black's work right now. Um, on the influencer side, I'd say Michele is undeniable. Yeah, um, definitely. Yoliswa has had such an incredible career as well. She Who is Yoliswa? So Yoliswa is a fashion and lifestyle influencer. Um, she's also a very, very close friend of mine. Um, she currently lives in Cape Town. Okay. But um, she was one of the first and earliest influences that I think I was like seeing frequently online, at least in, in, on, in the South African market. Mm -hmm. And she's still doing it. Um, I think she's incredible. Um, yeah, there's so many people <laughs> there. Guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I won't lie. Sorry, but yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I, I lean a lot towards. I think the people who work a lot behind the scenes. Okay. Um, but yeah, and uh, you know, in terms of influencing and people who are out there, um, you have, the list is really endless. There's Foyan is doing incredible right now. Oh yes. Seven days, seven faces has taken off. I, I think she even has another one coming up like very, very soon. Okay. Um, now that started during lockdown when st mm, lockdown started. That started during lockdown, so it's incredible to see like what that's doing now. I yeah. think lockdown did a good thing for creatives. I was about to ask. I mean, you know, now we what a year after COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, over a year over a year what, what is the landscape like for creators yeah. in general what does it look like anyway I think lockdown gave creators opportunities that we didn't have before so you know earlier I, I mentioned the fact that I also went through a period where I was unemployed for a year yeah. when lockdown started I was still in that year of being unemployed I think when lockdown started, I may have been unemployed for about nine months. Okay. Because of COVID and the fact that um, so many jobs shut down in the physical market, um, people just started looking for people who could freelance. Sure. 
obviously. So I picked up like a lot of writing jobs during that period. And those jobs led to other jobs, which led to the current job. And just from my own personal experience, and then also just looking at other creatives that I have access to, you were able to come up with so many ideas during that period because you had time on your hands. You were at home, you were locked up. So a lot of people were filming, a lot of people... Um, we're also online a lot. Yeah. So we were able to engage digitally in a way that like we didn't actually have time to before because yeah. our lives were always moving. Sure. So I think in that sense, like lockdown did a fantastic thing for creatives, not only in terms of creating jobs, <clears throat> but I think jobs were created from the content that came from that boredom, right? Yeah, yeah. Because this is, like I'm saying, how a lot of these things that have blown up now started like seven days seven faces came from i am locked up in the house i need to get back into filming what am i doing mm. and now it's such a massive thing and so many brands are behind it so that's incredible to see yeah it, is, it really is incredible i mean a lot of brands do, did also latch on mm. to uh, things that happened during lockdown and it's mm. good to see um people like for in mm. i hope i'm saying it right yeah. before in you know still carrying on with mm. what she started in the beginning mm. it's being beneficial mm. um i want to ask you you seem to have a love for fast and the furious apparently <laughs> I love it. I like. I I've been counting down until F nine. Okay, you know I probably lost. I probably lost it when <laughs> when Paul passed away. Mm. Yeah, how behind mm. am I? No, you're very far behind. <laughs> you're very far behind. No, but shame. I also I also lost it okay. somewhere along the way. Yeah. Except it was the other way around. When Paul passed, is when I came back to it, and okay. then I just didn't leave I think it was that song by um, we, uh, was it Wiz Khalifa mm, I think it's still like one of the highest viewed I think it's in the top 10 yes. viewed videos very still. interesting yeah yeah we were like that's how huge the franchise is like people took his passing very personally okay so you also then took uh, some uh, I would say liking to to the Fast and the Furious brand right after that mm, I think like I said it's it's one of those franchises that we've that we've grown with, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and clearly it's never going to end. <laughs> it's, it's a nine right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Fast and Furious 64. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how old will be at that distance. Right. <laughs> uh, tell me, makeup or fashion? Uh, why can't I have both? I mean, I mean, why can't I be every woman? Um, <laughs> you definitely can. You know, ladies. I would, I would, I would say fashion. Fashion. I think a lot of people probably would have thought I'd pick makeup, but mm. I always say like fashion is. It's, a, it's it's one of the earliest ways that I was able to express myself. Okay. You know, through fashion and the way that I used to dress. Um, it's also one of the things I loved about when I first moved to Cape Town. I was like, oh, there's so many people like me because there's so many creators yeah. and artists in Cape Town. Okay. Um, but it's changed over the years. We're very, like, turned down and monotonous now. So now you'd go make up more? Now I'd go make up more, maybe. Okay. <laughs> there was a tweet I came across not so long ago. I'm trying to remember when this tweet was. Maybe you mm -hmm. can tell me, but... It said, it tagged Ito Milan Kuna, the goalkeeper, and it said, your country needs you to do football, to do for football what Naledi Sibisi's wig did for its hair and beauty and reputation. <laughs> Can you tell me about that tweet? Ah, oh, that tweet was hilarious. <laughs> um, so there was a time when I was working with uh, an incredible makeup artist and hairstylist, um, she was from Zambia and we were doing like a couple of shoots, but every shoot that we did, my wig, uh, would be laid in a way that wigs are not normally laid. And okay. it was during a time when Americans used to make fun of South African wigs. So my <laughs> wig photos ended up going viral and they were like, this is who we're going to use when the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I, I became known as the wig girl, I guess, online. Okay. So that was actually very interesting. <laughs> who is this girl being tweeted by? One of the biggest sports accounts in the country. Insane. I actually thought it was a like a parody account, but yeah. that's all my mention. I saw something pop up on my phone. I actually was getting ready to go somewhere that morning. 
And then my phone kept vibrating and I couldn't understand, like, because I don't remember tweeting anything that day, really. Yeah. And then I checked my mentions and I realized, you no, know, it's like the real super sport and the tweet went viral as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it actually definitely did. Uh, just looking at that tweet alone and, and, and things going viral and, 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 and I'm noticing a lot of attention is coming on the African continent. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think the future of digital content creation just looks like for creators and just as a landscape on its own? What does it look like? Because, you know, we can mm-hmm. go viral right now. Mm-hmm. I think it looks incredible and it has looked incredible for a long time. Um, especially because of, like you say, the ability to go viral because it's not just our internet. Everyone across the world has this internet. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, even for me, it was kind of the way that I started finding ways to make money again because... I would tweet things that would somehow end up going viral because a lot of American followers somehow started finding my content, but it wouldn't necessarily be like my work. It would be like me tweeting jokes or something, but they would get hits like a hundred thousand hits or like 20,000 hits. And then my followers started rapidly going up, which would obviously also because of those tweets started changing my analytics. And so Then when I started getting into content creation, I was able to be like, oh, I know which ways to engage my audience and which ways I can, you know, get a certain level of traction. And so I was able to start charging like that and slowly started working with brands from there. So I think just on that basis, it's not just it's not just your phone and it's not just the Internet. Like you have access to so many so many different things you know it's kind of like how americans would make home videos that would land them on the ellen show yes, yes, you yes, can yes, make yes. a tweet that can land you a job just sure. if you do it right so that's an incredible thing for young people it's an incredible thing for creatives yeah the future is definitely bright i'll mm. tell you that mm. what can we expect from you in the coming future you've mentioned quite a lot of things and i and, and i do think you are just a little bit humble about about, about some oh. of the things I've really achieved, <laughs> and you. and I, I you know I always say to people that I sort of use um, uh, B roll as also you know my measure to know people and the people mm. that are doing well in the industry. And you're mm. one of the people that when I started out, we were one of the people I was seeing on the internet, whatever you were doing, but it Thank was you. definitely happening. Um, so what can we expect from you in the future? Um, you know it's. I, I quite like the way you phrase that question because it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Yeah. Um, especially just in terms of my own career trajectory and what I've done so far and where I'm at right now. I think I'm currently in a place where I can confidently say, you know, a lot of people always say, no, I'm not in competition with anyone. I'm only in competition with myself. I really, really am at this stage in my life. I think I, it's almost like I'm in a box and I'm not looking at what anyone else is doing and I'm trying to figure out what works for me. And um, currently I am loving being in the writing space and the digital space, but I think I definitely in the very near future want to lean towards um, more podcasts. Okay. Um, I think these are exactly like what we're doing today these are the kind of conversations I'd like to be having you know growing up I I used to say like one of my dream jobs would be to be like Angie Martinez and just sit down and chat to chat to the greats in the industry so I think I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna go more towards a digital direction like once I'm done with the writing yeah um I also think I'm gonna travel I think I'm gonna like I said, I think I need to do a UK stint. Okay. I think I need to. I think I need to dip for about two years. <laughs> okay, two years. For two years and come back. Is it our government? You know what? It yeah. might just be your government. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be the family meeting. <laughs> okay. What advice do you have for any content creators, micro influencers that are starting out? That possibly you know like that you know possibly lockdown said. No, no more for you. You can't. You can't go forward. Mm. What advice would you have for somebody that you know wants to start creation, but they they probably got some block, a creator's block rather. Mm. You know, I consider myself a micro influencer. My myself, myself, myself. <laughs> 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 but um, something that has really helped me, particularly during this lockdown period, 
um, and then the past six months. I think at the time that I started putting out a lot of content, um, I was very focused on the views and okay. getting money from it. Yeah. And when that wasn't happening, I got discouraged. Yeah. And it made me just stop for a while. But also it allowed me to just iron out what I want my direction to be. Do True. I want to go in the beauty direction? Did I, you know, did I want to be in the lifestyle direction? Yeah. And I think taking that time off to to get to know myself and to also just start putting certain pieces of my life together. I definitely have a clearer picture of what I want to do because I have a clearer picture of who I am. Yeah. So I think the best advice I can give is to take your time. Your time is your time, yeah. you know, and your race really is your race. If someone is able to do it in a quicker amount of time, that's their journey. So don't rush your process. Don't focus your process on the views or the engagement, but just, yeah, get to know yourself and be authentic with it. And people will naturally gravitate towards whatever you're doing if you're confident in that and if you're confident in yourself. So just take your time and trust the process. Hmm. I think that's what I'd say. Those are very, very wise words. <laughs> now, lady, thank you so much for coming to Bureau and thank chatting you. to me. Thank you. This I was know, so much fun. Yeah, I know we we definitely pulled this off um, in a very short space of yeah. time. So thank you for coming here and just giving mm. the advice that you gave on. You told, you told me about your life, where you mm. grew up. You told me about some of the work that you've done. And we've you've been chatting for more than 30 minutes and yet you're still humble at the end of it. <laughs> I love it. I hope I, I hope I stay that way. I like, I like it. <laughs> Tell me, uh, do you have any last words for anybody, for yourself, even, even if it is a last note for yourself? Hmm. I think, yeah, just to extend on, on what I just said, um... You need to be, especially if you're gonna, if you're gonna be in a creative space, um, you actually need to adopt a level of, <laughs> it's gonna sound weird, but you need to actually adopt a level of cockiness and being self-censored. You know, I, I always extend this to my writing process or anything that I create. The minute I start looking at what other people are doing, it distracts me yeah. because, you know, if I'm looking at too many writers, I can start to adopt their voice, their uh, style, their turn. Yes. And so when I say take time with yourself and get to know yourself, that process will help you iron out who you are as a person and who you're trying to be. Okay. And so take take that time with yourself and and don't rush the process. Don't 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 think you're in a race against anyone. Just be in a race with yourself. Thank you so much, Naledi, for coming to Be Wrong. Those are Thank very, you, very wise words. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you know we'll chat again. This is an ongoing conversation. For sure. But congratulations um, Thank you. Uh, on everything that you've done. And I think I actually have one last question. I do have last one question. Oh, but last question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a <laughs> um, what, what does it take to be at the top of what you do? <laughs> You ask this because am I at the top of what I do? I mean, it could I was, be anybody that you, know, you aspire to. Um, um, that's why I'm like, am I, you know, I was, <laughs> funny enough, there's a piece that I was writing uh, yesterday on Bonang. Okay. And the fact that she has been in this industry for 15 plus years which is insane. Yeah. Um, and I remember my opening line being like, she's another one I feel like we've grown with. Like, from when life started yes. to where she's at right now. In it's, the Nantle days even. Yeah, it's an insane career trajectory. But that took 15 plus years. Sure. So I think it's not just a matter of time, insane work ethic, and access it's about how hungry you are um, for what you want to achieve. And she's always been like a good example of someone who is hungry and she's getting what she wants. So I think you have to have that hunger. You have to have that drive. You have to have that razor sharp focus. Always remember why you started and where your target is and just don't let any of the other noise affect you. I think that's what it takes to be at the top. Mm. That's actually what I wanted 
perfect ending to the podcast. <laughs> I'm uh, glad. Yeah, geez, this is this has been a, as I said a Incredible very amazing chat. Yeah. Thank you so much guys for listening. This is Naledi CBC. Please do follow her on social media. I think your social media handles are Naledi CBC everywhere. Everywhere. Naledi <laughs> CBC everywhere. Do also subscribe to her YouTube channel. Thank you guys for listening. Also do subscribe to this channel. Like and subscribe actually to this channel and till the next episode. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye.